Welcome. This is what has been happening on the Sun today, the 21st of April 2011. Today is a very special day because it is the one year anniversary of the first images coming back from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. It's been a year of gathering tremendously valuable data on how the Sun works. So happy birthday, SDO. We've had quite a bit of activity, so let's first take a look at the sunspots and see where it's been occurring. Regions 1191 and 1193 have both shown signs of decay in the last 24 hours. Most of the activity has been coming from region 1195 and the newly numbered region following it, 1196. The small spot just trailing 1195 has not yet been numbered as a separate region, but I believe looking at the magnetic data that it must be, so I'm sure that eventually it's going to become region 1197. Since yesterday we've had four C flares and most recently we've had a C8 flare, all from region 1195. The view from the stereo ahead spacecraft shows Region 1190, which has just rotated off our visible disk, just at about at disk centre. 1193 on their east limb, and the old Region 1185 on their west limb, all show modest levels of activity. SDO seems to still be doing calibration scans, so some of the data is rather sparse. In the Sunspot and Magnetic movies, I'd like you to concentrate on the decay of Regions 1191 and 1193, and the apparent growth in Region 1195. Near the limb, magnetogram images can be very deceiving due to foreshortening effects. So what might appear as major changes in the active region, in fact, are just changes in geometry. If you want to find out more about that, see my video about negative sunspots. In the coronal movie, you can see some of the changes in the pointing direction of the spacecraft, but rather than that, try and concentrate on the activity off the southeast limb. From the stereo behind data, we see the region in the northeast is quite active. When that rotates onto the disk in a few days' time, that may be a source for new solar activity. Turning next to our composite coronal image, we can see that most of the activity for the next few days is going to come from those two regions in the southeast. We've had a few coronal mass ejections in the last 24 hours, so let's take a look and see what we got. First we'll go to the coronagraphs on board SOHO, and you can see in the northeast there have been several events. But there's also one off the back side of the sun that we don't see in the uh, LASCO data, which was captured by the stereo chronographs. Did you see it? The auroral zone seems less active than yesterday, and that is reflected in the KP index, which has been varying from 0 to 3. So in summary then, with all the new regions, the sunspot number has increased to 90. The X-ray background has also increased to the B6 level. The radio flux is at 117 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to about 450 kilometers per second, and the KP index is rated as quiet. So what's the forecast for the next 24 hours? I think we have a good chance of getting more C flares. M flares are now possible, seeing we've just had a C8, but I don't see the explosive growth in any of these regions that would make an X flare likely. The chances of continuing to get coronal mass ejections is quite good. NOAA has predicted that a geo-effective coronal mass ejection is heading our way in the next day or two, so a geomagnetic storm is quite possible. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.